I work for a company called Mars as well. Um, I'm contracted to them forever. Um, <laughs> well, that's what the, the confidentiality agreement says anyway. Um, and I have to, I have to um, basically, um, you have to go through this screen later on, which will erase your memory as you walk out this door. Um, because I'm not meant to show you any of this very confidential material. But however, um, the inner anarchist in me. Um, this is a project I've been working on since 2004 and uh, it's key line inspired. It's water harvesting um, and, and also soil harvesting and soil building, which are you know, the real fundamentals of key line. And, uh, it's called a um, sustainable cacao agroforestry system. Our intent is to, um, um, well, our first intent was to stop 300 metric tonnes of soil being lost per, per hectare per year. That's about equivalent to 67 um, 40 foot ship containers of soil every acre per year being lost off the site. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> Just peeling off the layers in hot rain. So we did that straight away. That wasn't too hard. Um, and now we're actually building soil, which is um, not too hard either, where you, where you know what to do. And um, we're also saving lots of water um, because all of that water that was running across the surface, taking all of the soil, now gets held in dams. And those dams are now um, make, made water available not only to our project, but to the community around it. So. It's a drought-proof community now, whereas before, even though it's a, um, something like a 60-inch rainfall zone, all of that rain comes in just you know, four or five months of the year and then it's dry as a bone, dusty and bone dry. Um, whereas now, um, they've got uh, more than enough water to, to do all of their agricultural activities. They don't have to pull any out of the ground. Um, like you guys, they, that's what they do. They get all their water from underground. Um, but unlike you guys, it's not illegal to actually harvest rainwater. So, um, so we've made the most of that. And we even built rainwater tanks, how about that? Um, <laughs> rainwater tanks that you can use for drinking water. What a novel concept. Um, yeah, so we had a lot of fun there. Cleared up all of this country, it was all bamboo and uh, that's that's actually four months from there to there for our research site. Pretty, pretty nice spot. And we built the rainwater tanks that harvest the water off their own roof um, using ferro cement. Trained up all the local bricklayers how to do all that sort of thing. Because they were the, you know, they're plasterers, they plaster, do um, plastering of bricks and whatnot every day. So they were the natural candidates for this sort of work. So we got them to work. Now they go around and build these structures for people in, uh, all the people in the villages are, are now getting rainwater tanks. Um, we worked out what the ideal size was. We asked the farmers how much water they need every year and now, that, now there's a standard tank. And it costs about 300 bucks, about the size, about the cost of a television. Yeah, so, which is pretty cool. We have a bit of a crack at engineering um, as well. One of our dams didn't hold too much water, so it was very porous clay, so we got to work on fixing that. And uh, this is a 50,000 cubic metre storage, which is about, what's that? About 30 acre feet of water. And that supplies um, a village with all of its water now. It's got a four inch PVC pipe that comes out of it. and. Uh, there's a pipe, there's an overhead pipe um, that people can come along with their little carts and uh, just go and fill it up and run away. <laughs> it was sort of a bit outside of the original mandate, but you know, you, you let an Australian out loose out in the bush and you never know what'll happen. <laughs> <laughs> I was just there to grow some cacao and save a bit of soil and water, but anyway. Um, <laughs> they're pretty happy though, thank, thank goodness. <laughs> uh, this is sort of stuff as well as another expression of broadacre key line and um, permaculture where we're stacking functions. We've actually combined alfalfa and olives together and we've done this in a key line layout. So what I mean by a key line layout is that uh, 
all of the rows are not on a contour, they're on a slightly, what I would call a falling contour, if you can get your head around that. Um, that all of the water actually runs from the valley out towards the ridge. Key line, in, in, when expressed in that way, is a system of rehydrating the ridges. Because most of our work is actually in dehydrating the ridges of our landscape. And most of our landscape that we use is actually ridges, so it seems pretty crazy that, uh, that we dehydrate most of our landscape. Yeah, it's actually pretty insane really, but anyway. Um, we do that with forestry, we do it with olives, uh, we do it with pastures, um, all sorts of things like you can see here. Um, and uh, with vineyards, all sorts of different systems that we um, use this, uh, this kind of system with very good results. I mean, this is at um, 15 inch rainfall and that's a six year old tree, um, which is not too bad. That's an acacia deal barter, which is a species that you have growing right here in Santa Barbara. It takes you a bit longer to grow that because you dehydrate your ground and um, I'm actually increasing rainfall because, you know, a lot of your rainfall actually just runs off, especially when your soil's hard. And then you're sort of scratching around for the rest of the year wondering when it's going to rain next. It sort of makes sense to take advantage of it when it hits. Yeah, and that's the result. You get accelerated growth and um, you get a bit of timber before you, uh, before you know it. 